Welcome to a lesson in the National ReadyMix Concrete Association's online safety series, ReadyMix Concrete Plant Safety. The plant safety video lesson was generously funded by the RMC Research and Education Foundation. There is a lot of activity at a ready-mix concrete plant. Aggregates and cement are transported by various methods to scales and batches. They are mixed and then they're put into mixer trucks. Ready-mix concrete trucks are rinsed, the concrete slump is checked, and the trucks are ready for the road. Dump trucks bring raw materials to the plant and tankers deliver cement to silos. Front end loaders move materials around the plant. And in short, a ready mix concrete plant is like a small city. Whether you're a plant operator, yard man, mechanic, concrete delivery professional, or you're just a visitor, you have to pay attention to what you are doing and follow basic safety procedures at all times. In this video, we will cover plant specific safety, including plant vehicle traffic, wearing the proper personal protective equipment, general plant safety signage, prevention of slips, trips, and falls, general plant safety inspections, lockout and tag out of power sources, and plant housekeeping, and much, much more. As mentioned earlier, concrete plants are busy environments, specifically, the number of vehicles operating at a concrete plant are numerous and continuous. Throughout a typical work day, there are any number of vehicles moving about, including concrete mixer trucks, cement tankers, aggregate haulers, company and personal vehicles, forklifts, front end loaders, and other industrial vehicles. All personnel at a concrete plant should constantly have their eye out for moving vehicles, whether entering the concrete plant property, exiting a structure at the plant, or simply working in the plant's yard. Also, personnel should be aware of the special dangers of trucks that are backing. As well, look out for and obey any and all signage for designated walkways inside and outside of the plant. And finally, Remember, make sure you give all vehicles the right of way. Depending on your job and work assignment at a concrete plant, the PPE that you should wear will vary. As a certified delivery professional, a hard hat, safety vests, safety glasses, chemical resistant gloves, and the appropriate safety shoes need to be worn. While performing the duties of a yard man or laborer, a hard hat, safety vest, safety glasses, and appropriate safety shoes will be required. Additionally, you may need hearing protection, a respirator, and work gloves. If your job requires you to enter a bin or a silo, dust collector, central mixer, or any confined space, then you also may have to wear a full body harness and may be accompanied by a supervisor and or an attendant. No matter what your job is and the task at hand, you'll need the proper PPE. If you have any questions about what personal protective equipment to wear, ask your supervisor or the plant manager for guidance before performing the work task. Finally, when around welding activities, these tasks should be only performed by authorized personnel using the proper PPE. As well, any other personnel in the vicinity of welding activities should never look directly at the welding process without proper eye protection. 
For a plant manager or a plant operator, signage is one of the first items for review. Are there posted traffic control signs in and out of the plant? At fuel stations, there should be no smoking and flammable liquid signs. Any hazardous material needs to have proper labels and to be stored only in designated areas. Are PPE signs in the proper areas where required PPE is to be worn? Confined space entry signs need to be posted and visible to all employees in areas that are considered confined spaces. These may include central mixers, hoppers, bins, dust collectors, material storage areas such as silos, and even where some conveyors operate. These areas may only be entered after a supervisor has trained employees on the confined space entry procedures, a permit is signed by workers and supervisors, atmospheric conditions are tested, and the proper PPE is worn. Signs must be posted identifying areas that require lockout and tagout procedures before workers perform inspections, maintenance, or repair. Primary and secondary power source terminals and switches need to be completely labeled to all equipment. All breaker panels need to have individual switches labeled to identify equipment energized by these switches. There should be no gaps or missing switches. Lockout boards and signs may be posted at the plant. They should have multiple lockout devices and individual locks and keys on them and be placed in a central location accessible to authorized employees during their work shift. If there are regulated areas at the plant, signs for those areas must be adhered to. As well, fire extinguishers should have individual signs displaying the location of each fire extinguisher. Never allow clutter or obstructions to block the pathway to the signage or the fire extinguisher at any time. All exits must be clearly marked with lighted signs. Historically, slips, trips, and falls are the leading cause of injuries at concrete plants. Always walk at the plant. Don't run. Workers and visitors should always wear the proper work shoes at all times. A good sturdy pair of lace-up boots approved by your company is a good place to start. The moment you arrive for work, make sure that those shoelaces are tied. By the way, those soles need to have a good tread on them for good traction. Use handrails going up and down stairs. Don't carry tools in both hands, preventing you from using the handrails. Don't put both hands in your pockets when walking on stairs. Don't carry an object tying up your hands and blocking your view. Leave a hand free for the handrail and watch where your feet are going. Avoid things like stepping on tools. Avoid a collision at a blind corner. Step carefully in wet areas. Often in the load lane or rinsing and slump rack areas, the surface may be wet, which can be slippery. Concentrate on every step and walk carefully when in these places. When working around the discharge points of the plant, use caution not to walk directly under the discharge area. Materials may become dislodged and fall on you, even if the equipment is not currently in the discharge mode. Regularly scheduled plant safety inspections will be conducted. During a walking visual inspection around the plant, are steps in a proper state of repair? Are all handrails in place and usable up and down stairways? Are there bags, boxes, or items cluttering walkways, or are they stored neatly? Are there places for washdown hoses to be coiled and hung so that employees may walk through those areas without tripping. Plant walkway inspections for cleanliness need to be performed. And is there excess buildup on the walkways? Does buildup come into contact with water, forming slippery conditions? If so, have the areas cleaned so that slips and trips don't occur. On conveyor belt systems, 
Are all head and tail pulley guards in place? Are all handrails in a good state of repair and available for use? Do emergency stop cords work correctly when pulled? Are the conveyor walkways free of excess material buildup? Safety data sheets need to be kept and accessible to all employees. These product information and first aid remedy sheets will have specific information for various hazardous materials and products found at the plant. When making plant inspections, be observant, be thorough, and if there is a safety hazard or defect you've identified, have it corrected at once. Other areas of particular concern for regular inspections include, but they aren't limited to, aggregate storage areas, confined spaces, dust collection systems, compressed air systems, maintenance shops, warehouses, admixture and color storage areas, cement and fly ash filling areas, truck washout areas, and outside lighting. Whether you're working on a conveyor, a central mix drum, a scale gate, or checking rubber boots, when you inspect or repair a piece of energized equipment at the plant, you first need to lock out and tag out the power sources to the equipment and test it before inspection or repair. Never attempt to clean, oil, adjust, or repair any machine while it's in motion. It doesn't matter that you'll only be in that area for only a few seconds or minutes. That is all it takes for equipment to start without warning and to seriously injure or kill you or another worker in the absence of observing lockout tagout procedures. For more detailed information on lockout tagout, please refer to NRMCA's online safety series, Lockout Tagout Tryout in the Ready Mix Concrete Industry. Always remember, always operations of electric powered equipment can be as safe or as hazardous as you make it. Proper inspection, maintenance, and repairs will keep all personnel safe. First and foremost, a qualified electrician should perform all repairs to any electrical systems. Any electrical repair should be accomplished in strict accordance with lockout and tagout procedures. Make sure that all electrical equipment is properly grounded. During routine plant inspections, make sure that all electrical cables and electrical enclosures are in good condition and kept out of any water. As you can see, there are many people and lots of activity underway at a ready-mix concrete plant. Use safe work practices in every task that you perform at the plant. If you have any questions about safety procedures or tasks, ask your supervisor or the plant manager for instructions before performing these tasks. What we want to leave you with is this, that safety in the workplace is about making sure that each and every worker gets home at the end of the day the same way that they started, healthy and alive. Adhering to sound plant safety practices is just one more way to ensure this happens. NRMCA would like to recognize its affiliation with the Concrete Plant Manufacturers Bureau and its members. The member companies of the CPMB are the NRMCA preferred suppliers of concrete plants and concrete plant equipment. CPMB is an independent nonprofit organization. Its members are the manufacturers of concrete plants, controls, plant mixers, and air quality equipment for the concrete industry. These members are committed to your success, and they are definitely committed to maintaining safe plant operations. Now, for more information about programs offered by NRMCA and CPMB, please call or visit them online. Thank you for joining us for this short safety series lesson on ready-mix concrete plant safety. We also give special thanks to Cheney Enterprises of Lorton, Virginia and Superior Concrete Materials, a U.S. concrete company, Lorton, Virginia, for graciously allowing us to film at their plant.